Hello. Matte Painter for Blender is an add-on I've been developing for the past two years. It takes some already existing workflows and concepts, such as importing images onto a plane, and builds upon them to allow users to composite 2D and 3D elements more efficiently within a scene. Before we begin, I should note that this style of workflow can be quite taxing on your hardware. I'm using a single 4070 Ti and this shot almost maxes out my VRAM. A large part of this is due to the 3D assets in the scene, but using very high resolution images or videos can definitely cause bottlenecks on slower computers. You'll need the latest version of Matte Painter to follow along with this tutorial, which I'm releasing at the same time as this video. If you've already purchased it, you can grab the latest update from Blender Market or your Gumroad profile. If you haven't grabbed it yet, I recommend watching this video through first to decide if it's something you'd like to add to your workflow. The latest update includes improvements to the texture projection pipeline, automatic handling of alpha channels, improved shaders, numerous bug fixes, and support for Blender 4.0. I'm still using 3.6 for this tutorial. To install the add-on, open Preferences in Blender, click Add-ons, then Install. Navigate to the downloaded Matte Painter zip file and hit Install Add-on. Click the checkbox to activate it, then save your preferences. You can find the add-ons interface in the 3D viewport side panel. If you can't see the side panel, hit the N key. Before we go any further, I'd like to cover a few important points about digital matte painting. A matte painting is essentially a collage of images which will project onto simple geometry to serve as background or mid-ground elements within a scene. This is a great way to add photorealism to a scene because we're using actual photos instead of 3D assets or textures. Because the images are projected onto geometry, they inherit all of the usual benefits of a 3D scene like parallax and depth of field but we can also make the geometry emissive which can help light our scene and enhance reflections in the foreground. It's important to note that not every shot needs to include a digital matte painting, and not every shot needs to be fully 3D either. The industry has changed significantly over the last few decades and the lines between 3D and 2D have become blurred. Use your own instincts and experience to decide which kind of pipeline your shot will necessitate. As I mentioned earlier, Matte Painter takes the import images as planes workflow and builds upon it. We import an image or video onto some simple geometry then use a transparency mask to add or remove values to the alpha channel. This means we're painting the transparency in or out to show or hide sections of the imported image. One of the most important things to keep in mind is the types of image you plan on using. I highly recommend planning the shot ahead of time and really thinking about the type of scene you want to create. Carefully consider the environment, lighting, camera movement, and how you want to separate the foreground, midground, and background elements. Gather appropriate references beforehand so you're not fumbling around too much. For this tutorial, I'll be creating a simple snowy mountain shot with dramatic overcast lighting and I'll be using fantasy assets for the buildings. It's going to be an establishing shot, so the camera movement will be similar to how a drone might fly over the terrain. Once you've planned the shot, I recommend sticking to it, because once we've started projecting textures and lining everything up, changing the camera move might break the illusion. To save time, I've already set up the foreground and midground assets. If you want to follow along, you can download the zip file linked in the description. There's two versions. The basic blend contains the actual mountain geometry, but none of the other pieces due to licensing restrictions. Feel free to add your own hero pieces, buildings, HDRI, or other geometry. The composite blend contains the entire foreground rendered to an image sequence with transparency. Open the compositor, import the sequence, set the frame count to 120, and check auto refresh. Now connect the render layer's output to the first socket of the alpha over node, and plug the image sequence into the second socket. This will give you the exact foreground to follow along with, plus it's much lighter so it should work on lower end computers. To see the foreground in render view, activate the viewport compositor. Both scenes have the camera movement and sun lamp already set up for you. The main mountains were created with Gaia, and the buildings are from Kitbash's free cargo library. These foreground assets are from Megascans. Because I know the style of lighting I want to use, I've loaded an HDRI that matches it. The rest of the lighting comes from the sun lamp. I've hidden the HDRI by going to Render Settings, Film, and checking Transparent. Now we can start creating our digital matte painting. First, I'll create a more interesting sky by blending multiple sky images. I'm using these images from the Dramatic Skies pack. All of the links are in the description. Open the side panel with the N key and select Matte Painter. You can full screen a workspace in Blender by hitting Control Spacebar. Since we don't need to look at the outliner or timeline while painting, this can be quite useful. If you hover the mouse over any of the interface controls, a pop-up will appear explaining what that control does. We can import our first image in one of two ways. The import button opens a browser window which we can use to navigate to the image we want to import. The paste clipboard button will automatically import whatever image is on our clipboard. The image will be stuck onto a plane wherever our 3D cursor is, and oriented to face the active camera. By default, Matte Painter will import the image with an emissive material. 
This is useful because it means our lighting information from the photo will affect the rest of the scene. Because our imported image is projected onto a plane, we can use all of the normal Blender operators to manipulate it. Press G to move, S to scale, and R to rotate the image. If you want to isolate the image by hiding everything else, hit the forward slash key. The geometry has a single subdivision, so you can warp the image by jumping into edit mode and moving the vertices around. Matte Painter works with a layer system, and automatically creates a collection for us to keep everything organized. Our imported image now has a layer assigned to it. We can select the image by clicking the name. If the layer is active, it will be highlighted in blue. The buttons to the right of the layer allow us to quickly adjust some high level properties of the image. From left to right, we can hide or show the layer, lock the layer to prevent accidentally selecting it, invert the transparency mask, display the transparency mask, inherit the image's original alpha alongside the mask, and toggle between a regular albedo or an emissive color setup. Let's paint on our layer to adjust the transparency mask. Select the layer by clicking on it, then click Paint. Alternatively, you can hold Control, Shift, and left click the active geometry. Blender will switch to texture paint mode and select the transparency mask so we aren't painting over the original image. Transparency masks use non color or black and white information to determine whether the pixel is visible or not. If we use black, we paint out the transparency. If we use white, we paint in the transparency. Any gray value in between will partially paint the transparency in or out. By default, Blender should have white as a foreground and black as a background color. We can change these values by clicking them and selecting a new color. We can swap between foreground and background colors by pressing the X key. Using black as a foreground color, paint a stroke on the image. You should see that section of the image disappear. If it doesn't, make sure you're in material preview or render mode. Cycle sometimes doesn't automatically update, so if you paint a stroke and nothing changes, switch to material preview, then back to cycles. If the stroke still isn't painting, come up to the paint options drop down and try toggling occlude or backface culling on or off. If it still doesn't paint, click the texture slots drop down and make sure the transparency mask is selected as the active paint layer. It should have the prefix mask. If you don't want to keep switching the foreground and background colors, you can force Blender to use the opposite color by holding control and painting a stroke. You can change the brush size with the F key or the square brackets. Note that using a very large brush can slow the viewport down, especially on very high resolution images. Above the layers panel lie several tool presets. These are only clickable while in texture paint mode. The brush tool is Blender's default painting mode. You can press B to quickly switch to it. The line tool lets you paint straight lines. This is useful for things like buildings. The shortcut is Shift B. The fill all tool is useful to quickly replace the mask with the foreground color. The shortcut is Shift Backspace. I recommend working from camera view so we aren't wasting too much time painting things we wouldn't see otherwise. This is why planning the shot out thoroughly is so useful. Scale the image up quite a bit and push it into the background. I'm going to scan through the timeline and make sure there's not any holes or gaps before I start painting. I'm also going to hide the foreground assets to help speed up the viewport for painting. You can change the transform orientation type to view, which can make positioning the layer easier. If you duplicate a layer with Shift D, it will inherit the same mask as the original. To give it a new mask, select the duplicated object and click Make Unique. The latest version of the add-on imports the image to the 3D cursor. To quickly position new layers, hold Shift and right-click the sky we just painted. Now we can import some more images and they'll already be at the correct location. If you push the objects into the background and find them disappearing, increase the clip end values of the viewport and your active camera. If you're using lots of transparency layers and noticing black spots in the render, increase the cycles layers until they disappear. If two imported images have slightly different color palettes, you can adjust them with Matte Painter's color grading tools. If you select a Matte Painter layer, the color grade subpanel will appear. Opacity adjusts the layer's global transparency. Blur adds a simple vector-based blur to the image. The RGB curves allow you to adjust the values of the image or fine-tune individual color channels. The hue saturation value sliders allow you to tint the color, adjust the saturation, and change how bright or dark the image is. Next, I'll combine all of these images using Ctrl J and add a simple deform modifier to bend them slightly. This helps the sky wrap around the environment for better lighting and parallax. The simple deform modifier needs additional geometry to work with, so let's add a subdivision surface modifier before it. Before we go any further, it's vital that you save all of your images. 
Blender doesn't save images automatically, so if it crashed now, we would lose all of our painted textures. Click the Save All button on the Map Painter panel to save everything. Another important thing to keep in mind is the movement of the camera. We need to make sure our images are large enough to fill the shot from the very first frame to the very last. I regularly hit the spacebar to start timeline playback to carefully check for any gaps in the sky. You can jump to the start or end by holding shift and hitting the left or right arrow keys. Here's the shot with the new sky. Now let's add some extra background mountains. I have these images already set up in my PureRef document. If you aren't using PureRef already, I highly recommend it. It's free and extremely powerful for organizing references. I can just select an image, hit Ctrl C to copy it to my clipboard, then import it using Matt Painter's paste clipboard function. These mountains are already masked, which is a huge time saver. Unfortunately, Blender's texture painting tools don't include useful selection options like Lasso or Magic Wand, which can make painting out intricate edges quite time consuming. The latest Matt Painter update checks if the imported image already has transparency, and if it does, it will inherit it. We can still paint any sections we don't want using our transparency mask. If your image isn't already cut out, you'll need to take some time to carefully paint out the edges. I have to stress the importance of selecting appropriate images for the shot. If the lighting doesn't match your scene, it will look wrong. If the image is blurry from depth of field or has heavy color grading or filters, it will also look wrong. One of the cool aspects of using real photos is that we get all of the volumetric fog baked into the image. We'll also add some volume scattering later to really glue everything together. By now, you've probably noticed the camera projection panel in Matte Painter. If we hide all of the other elements, we can render out a single frame and save it to a PNG with transparency. Now, create some proxy geometry using the original as a guide. Load the image we just created into the camera, jump into camera view with the zero key on your numpad, select the proxy geometry, set your projection resolution to 100% and hit project. This converts the object into a matte painter layer and projects the image onto it, including the transparency. Close the image by clicking here. As always, we can make any adjustments by painting the transparency mask and color grading. An added benefit of this technique is that our image will always look like it's in render view, which can be helpful when planning our next steps. This particular example would need slightly more detailed geometry to really capture the parallax, but if these buildings were very far in the background, you can get away with a simple plane. Now that we've replaced some of those buildings, we can free up some memory by deleting them and removing their linked materials and data blocks. Do this by clicking Clear Unused. Make sure you save all images again. Here's the shot with the camera projection and background mountains. It's starting to really come together. Now let's add some volume scatter. Create a cube and scale it. Give it a new material and delete the principal BSDF. Add a volume scatter to the volume socket and lower the density. If you're following along with the composited blend file, you'll want to add a mix color node after the foreground and lower the mix value. Try playing with the blend mode. We can push the illusion of depth even further by creating an empty paint layer, positioning it behind our foreground and painting in some fog using a soft round brush. Lower the opacity to help blend it. Alternatively, if you have some video fog elements, you can import them with Matte Painter. If they're on a black background, plug the color into this mix node and check the blend original alpha button. If the fog is an image sequence, import the first frame and then click To Sequence. Turn on motion blur in the render settings. This further pushes the realism. I've added some extra video cards for the smoke. I've also rendered out a snowstorm as an image sequence, which we can add in the compositor using an alpha over node. I did all of my post-processing in Resolve, but I'm working on a full post-processing video for Blender in the future. To summarize, I did some color grading, added film grain and lens distortion, threw on a LUT and imported some free sound effects. Here's the final shot. The links for the images and assets I've used are in the description. If you find this content valuable, please like and subscribe so I know to make more. Thanks everyone. I hope you find the add-on useful.